affect other species and the world that we live in and himself by perfecting the ability to think first original thought see there used to be a time in history when man was just like all the other animals he didn't think he didn't know good from evil he existed and lived by instinct just like the other animals did if you want to believe the record that we can look back and see written in stone okay if you want to believe that there were creatures that ultimately became this thinking man that you see standing up here in front of you and sitting out there amongst you didn't have this ability now if you doubt that read Genesis in the Bible and you'll see that is confirmed there. Wasn't there a time when Adam and Eve lived in the Garden of Eden? They were not to think. They did not know good from evil. They were just there to take care of the garden. Is that correct? So this concept and the biblical concept agree. Man just enjoyed what God had put there and sort of took care of the garden. Any dentist will tell you that our mouth was not made for eating meat. So ancient man most probably ate vegetables and nuts and things like that. Roots. Doesn't mean that I'm telling you to become a vegetarian because I'm not. You see, I really believe in freedom. I believe you should eat whatever you feel like eating. That's your business. But that's known to people who study these things as the age of innocence. Something happened that brought man out of that state, and if you're talking from a biblical reference, out of the Garden of Eden and into the world. He wasn't innocent anymore. He understood that he was naked, and that his partner was naked. He could think. He could look around. He knew when something was good and when it was bad, just as we all do here. When somebody comes up to me and says, well, how do we know which is the right way to go? I know that person is setting me up to justify his bad deeds, and I won't do it. You always know. We always know which is the right way and which is the bad way. The bad way sometimes feels better, so we may choose that way and justify it by rationalization in order to make ourselves feel better about the bad that we did. In the mystery schools, they refer to this mystical time of coming out of the age of innocence as the Luciferian philosophy. I've tried to illuminate you with this for years on my radio broadcast. In the Bible, or in the church, they talk about the fall of man. Same thing. There's only one difference between the Luciferian philosophy and the fall of man is that those who talk about the fall of man believe in God whether or not they believe in a savior they believe in God the ones who believe in the Luciferian philosophy do not now here's how that works in the Bible, we're told that Eve was tempted by Satan to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God had commanded Adam and Eve not to eat of the fruit of that tree. If you do, ye will surely die. Isn't that the commandment? The Lucifer, through his agent Satan, on the other hand, told Eve, God lied to you. He's holding back the fact that you too can become God. But first you have to eat of the fruit of this tree. And if you do, you will surely not die, but shall become as gods. Isn't that true? So, from the religious aspect, we see that as the fall of man because man disobeyed God. 
We see that as the subjugation of the woman beneath man, where she had originally been the partner. Now she is subjugated beneath man because she was the agent of man's downfall. Is that correct? Now I'm not talking right or wrong. I'm not trying to insult anybody in here. I'm just telling you what we're taught so that we all understand what we're talking about because that's most important. If you understand something differently than what I'm trying to impart to you up here, and we don't have the same definition, we're not going to understand each other, are we? The mysteries, on the other hand, look at this in a different light. Here's their story. It's a metaphor. They don't believe that there ever was a God, or that there ever is a God, aside from man himself. And man has not reached that state yet, but can, this is what they teach in the lodges, that if you perfect yourself as the temple of the God within and become Christed, you've all heard this in the New Age movement, you too can become God. In her movie, running on the beach, spinning around, I am God. Go ask her early in the morning when she just wakes up and goes and sits in front of the mirror and looks at her aging face and tries to cover it up with makeup if she's got. She may tell you a different story about that time. Around noon, she might be feeling better and become God again. But this is the reality of the human condition. We'd all love to be gods, wouldn't we? My question to Shirley MacLaine at one time was, please, Shirley, could you make me a universe? She sort of looked at me with this hurt look on her face as she confronted her mortality and realized that she was not God because she could not make me a universe. She couldn't even make herself a universe. She can't even make herself look young again. She's having a hard time paying some of her debts. God doesn't have that problem, does he? And in her case, she. <coughs> Here's the way they look at it. Here's their metaphor for the end of innocence. Adam and Eve were held prisoner in the Garden of Eden by an unjust, cruel, and vindictive God. Until Lucifer, through his agent Satan, set man free from this garden by giving him the gift of intellect. Through the use of intellect, man will conquer the earth, will conquer nature, and will himself become God. It's taught in every Masonic temple in this land, every secret brotherhood, every secret society, Every mystical temple, every occult organization teaches the Luciferian philosophy. They do not believe in Lucifer. They do not believe in any entity called a devil, and they do not believe in God. It is a mistake for you to assume that they do. They are atheists in the strictest sense of the word. They are humanists. That's their religion. At the highest level, their goal is to create a world in which the adepts, the thousand points of light, working behind the veil to create the culmination of the great plan, can realize the ultimate happiness for mankind. That's why they don't oppose pornography. That's why they don't oppose certain crimes. That's why they say you should not be put in jail for the rest of your life for murder or anything else. There should be no death penalty because it was a learning experience. And having gone through that learning experience, you're a better person now. This is what they teach. They believe punishment for these crimes is nothing more than vengeful retribution, which is wrong in their eyes. So these are really the two philosophies that we have competing with each other in the world today. Who 
brought man the gift of fire? 